Hi and welcome to a new vault log. In this episode I'm going to show you how I repaired the logic board from a friend's iPhone 5C. So this all started with me trying to replace the battery in this phone. It was about two years old and uh, it wasn't holding charge like it used to. So I purchased a replacement battery, opened the phone, I carefully removed all screws keeping note of uh, which screw goes where on a magnetic mat because as you might know they use uh, different length screws inside this phone and if you put them back in the wrong position you can easily damage some fine traces on the logic board and that would be a very difficult uh, repair. So I replaced the battery, put everything back together and it seemed to work just fine. But a couple of hours later my friend calls me and says the phone keeps rebooting without any apparent reason. You can imagine the first thing that came to mind was that I somehow screwed up and put uh, one of those screws in the wrong position and I must have accidentally damaged the logic board. So I asked him to bring the phone back, I uh, once again disassembled it and took a closer look at the screws. They were all in the right position. I next took a look at the connectors and searched for any signs that something went wrong, like I might have bent a pin or uh, some dirt might have uh, gotten in the uh, fine connectors. I even suspected the battery of being faulty, but it was a new battery and the phone was working, just that it was rebooting from time to time. So when I got to inspecting the battery connector, I noticed something strange. It seemed like a very small component was out of place. That's all I could see without any magnification. So next I placed the board under my microscope and then everything became so obvious. I was missing four components from the logic board right next to the battery connector. And I immediately realized this might have happened either when disconnecting the old battery connector because I used the spudger or when I plugged in the new one. These are 01005 components that is just uh, 0.4 by 0.2 millimeters in size. These are barely visible with the naked eye. In fact here is a picture comparing um, 01005 with 0603 component. It makes the 0603 look huge. Next I googled for a schematic and board view for this phone and luckily I was able to find one. Um, this document is quite popular because there are a lot of people repairing these logic boards. And if we take a look at um, this uh, schematic part, I was missing um, FL11, C279, C23 and C25. Those three caps are small value decoupling capacitors, so they can't be that important to make this phone reboot. But FL11 on the other hand seems rather important. It's a chip inductor with the role of filtering in line the APBI battery SWI signal which judging by its name it's a digital single wire interface that the processor uses to talk to the battery. I'm guessing the processor needs to talk to the battery to check how much juice is got left and take decisions based on that data. A bit of googling and it seems that if this signal is hum somehow interrupted and the system can't talk to the battery, it throws an error in the system log and then reboots itself. So that's not the best approach, I mean why would you want to reboot a system if it can't talk to the battery? Uh, you could log that error but I see it unnecessary to reboot the system. But that's how they did the software in this um, phone. So I have confirmation that this is the problem. Now fixing the problem is not going to be very easy because those components are extremely small and I don't have a proper microscope for micro soldering. I only have this uh, biology microscope with about 2 cm working distance and that wasn't enough to allow me to get in there with a the soldering iron. So first I decided that I wasn't going to resolder those uh, decoupling caps. There are a bunch of others around and since there's such a small value, 56 picofarads, they're not going to cause too much trouble if they're missing. So I only needed to resolder the ferrite bead. I wasn't going to do this under the microscope because of the small working distance and I couldn't do it with my naked eye so I had to improvise. I used a compact magnifying glass and placed it in front of the logic board. I then got my, fine, my finest soldering iron tip and try to resolder that ferrite bead. 
However, I couldn't do it. The tip was still too big and the position and everything was working against me. So at that point, I just decided to skip the ferrite as well and do a solder bridge on those pads. That should connect the signal back to the processor without any filtering, but it should still work okay. Filtering circuits like in this case are there mostly for worst case scenarios and the circuit will work fine without that part under normal working conditions. Of course, doing just a solder blob on those pads was much easier and it was a success. I reconnected everything to the logic board and I was happy to see that the phone was now working fine and it wasn't rebooting anymore. This was an interesting repair. I took it step by step and learned some things about these uh, logic boards and in the end I got a very satisfying result. Finding that schematic and board view was definitely a big help in understanding the problem because without that info I would have no idea what those components were and what role they had. So that is always useful when doing a board repair. I will post some links in the description below to a better microscope for this job. I would like to get one of these soon and uh, also I will link some tools that I used in this uh, repair. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.